Woohoo! You've made it! Part 10 of 10 in the video series on Document Controller. And I'd say that we saved some of the best for last. Today we're going to be talking about issue tracking. This is a super important topic because the reality is that the majority of the consumers of information from Document Controller may never even open up the program. Those field guys or office guys may work best with just a PDF or an Excel output from the program and today we're going to learn exactly how to do that. We're going to take a look at the list and card view in Constructability Manager which stores all the information for the issues that we've been creating along the way. We'll see how the viewpoints come along with them and how they can be sent to the reporting engine. We'll take a quick look inside the reporting engine to see how it works and see that we have a layout in the background and data fields that are mapped to that report template. From there, we'll print some reports and we'll run some filters on there so that you can see how to get just the report that your teammates need. Let's get into this last part of the video series and start working on some issues. Now it's time to start putting those issues that we've been creating along the way into a report that can be used by non-doc controller users. To do that, we navigate to the Manage Issues Workflow item within the Workflow panel. Notice that there is a list here of all the items that were created each time we added a cloud during our review process. We can also access the issues by creating a new view and selecting the List Issues option. Here we see all of the items with a unique code and date for when they were created. If you want to drill down further, you can right click on any issue and choose Open in New View. Each time an issue is opened, there is also a card view for putting in more and more detail about the specific issue. There's over 20 available data fields that exist in both the list view and the card view, so no worries about which one you prefer to use. All of the information that is put into the data fields in the list and card view can then be sent to the reporting engine so that the issues can be exported as a PDF, Excel, or HTML file that can be consumed by non-doc control users. There's even a discussion board within the card view that allows reciprocating communication back and forth between stakeholders who are managing issues. Returning to the list view, we can begin to use the column presets to help ourselves with reporting. Column presets can be found in the Constructability Manager tab and include a standard, status, and impact preset. Within each of the presets is a predefined group of columns whereby if you fill in all of the data for those columns, you will have a complete constructability report that matches the templates that were shipped with Document Controller Standard. You also have the option for managing a custom column preset in case you'd like a different group of information and rest assured that all of the data within all of the columns can be mapped to edited constructability reports based on user preferences. Uniquely created view sets can be saved within the Manage Presets dialog. Also, if you'd like to see similar functionality in the more detailed car view, Right-click in any of the black cells and choose Field Selector. Notice here that you have the option to toggle on and off all of the available fields for Constructability Manager. Once you've input information into the list view of Constructability Manager, you can use the Filter Editor just as you can in other parts of the program. Here, I want to create a dynamic filter for high priority issues whose status is equal to new. 
When I hit apply, you'll see that the entire constructability issue list filters down to just those items that match my search criteria. Now that we have all of the necessary information for our issues, we'll start to get them out of the system using the Create and Run Reports tab from the Workflow panel. To see how reports work, I'm going to choose Edit here from my list of templatized reports that came with the program. This is what a report template looks like. Notice that it's only one page with the layout of the information in the background and all of the data fields are mapped to that single page source. Within each cell, I see this orange icon here that lets me know which of the data fields is mapped to that part of the report template. I can always go in and edit these templates and edit the assigned data however I'd like. Once I've done that, it's time to check my report. Once I hit Generate Report, notice that I get six pages worth of issues, a page for each of the issues within Constructability Manager. We can see here that all of the clouds and viewpoints that we've been creating and tracking along the way are now exposed to report that can be exported to PDF or Excel. Next, let's learn how to add a dynamic filter to the report so only those issues meeting specific criteria will be sent out to the reporting engine. In this case, I'm going to add a filter to the constructability issues to only print issues with a status of new and a priority of high. Using these dynamic filters to regulate the reports can greatly save time for non-DOC controller users because you can print reports that only contain the information that they need, information that is only for the estimator, for example, or only for the superintendent all of the old status issues that need to be reviewed or all of the new status issues that need to be reviewed. Once I'm done editing the template, I can hit save and then I'll go to run my report once more. When I generate the report, notice that this time there's only three issues in the report. That means that only three of the issues match the condition of status new and severity high. Once I've got my filter set the way I want, I want to start to export these reports. To do that, I click on the fly up window up here up top and I choose the format that I want to export to. First, I'll create a PDF, a pretty universal document. Next, I'll also hit the export button once more and I'll create an XLS document or an Excel file. These are very handy for sharing constructability reports with non-users whom you'd like to be able to comment on the report using a unique column or cell in Excel after the file has been exported. If you find yourself creating a lot of report modifications and you want to store them, the best thing to do is to copy and save the templates once more. Here, I've created a new category for just the report styles that my company wants to use. Each of these reports can have their own data fields or their own filters applied to them. Let's say, for example, that you want to save all of your high priority new issue filters as one category. You could do that. You could also edit the template to include any information that's within Constructability Manager but not part of the default report templates that were provided. As an example, I'll go here and change the existing description field to a field that we'll call our style for now and I'll map the discussion board from Constructability Manager onto the field list of the report. 
Once I do that, I can see that description changes to is visible for the discussion. And now I've modified the report template for future use again and again. So that's it. That's how you get the constructability issues out of Doc Controller and into the hands of those who need it. Congratulations, my friends. You hereby know everything that you need to know to use Document Controller on your own projects. Remember that we learned how it's a repository for all of our project inputs, both 2D and 3D. We learned how to do change analysis with it, and we learned how to create and communicate with reports from the system so that we could get it into the hands of all the project stakeholders. If you still want to learn more, ask the Google about our training dates and come and visit us at one of the on-site sessions to dig even deeper. And if you have any questions or comments about Document Controller, the video series, or if you just want to rap about awesome stuff, reach out to me at Dwayne underscore Gleason at Trimble.com. That's all for now. Now go enjoy Document Controller and use it on one of your own projects. Take care.